In this video, I'd like to share with you my method of attaining kavana and tefillah. I call this the mm method of kavana based on the mnemonic, mm, tefillah is good. Uh, the six M's uh, stand for the following. Uh, milim, words. Mikra, scripture or Torah Shavichsav. Mefarshim, commentaries. Mesora, uh, the oral tradition. Mind and meaning. Now, before I explain what each of these are, let me just comment on their interrelationship. First of all, these, uh, even though I have numbers here, these should not be understood as sequential. You don't have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. You could go in any order you'd like. I personally like going one, five, two, three, four, six. Um, another note is that these are not all essential. Um, it's not like you have to do all of them. You can do whichever ones you want or whichever ones you're capable of or interested in. Think of these as six avenues to attain Kavana, not a six step integrated process of, uh, of arriving at Kavana. Okay, so let's go through them. Number one, milim, words. You obviously cannot have Kavana without understanding what you're saying, uh, but depending on what your level of fluency is in Hebrew, you're gonna have uh, different options here. So if you're not very fluent in Hebrew, then I would suggest consulting different translations of the text, at least two. So let's say, for example, take an art scroll, take a Koran, and then compare the different translations, and that will cause your mind to process the meanings of the words in a different way than you would have if you had just glanced at the text. Um, Secondly, if you are able to, uh, to translate, then come up with your own translation, um, you know, using a dictionary, using your own, uh, your own Hebrew knowledge. Uh, I find that when I translate a text myself, it sticks with me more than when I uh, consult one in, uh, in a published book. Um, if you are on an advanced level, then you can start to scrutinize and analyze the grammatical nuances. Um, to get even more fine-tuned in your understanding, uh, but that's beyond my personal capability. Um, similarly, I would suggest comparing two different nuschaos, two different versions of the Siddur. Uh, I, this could be a rabbit hole in the sense that there are many, many different versions. I usually like to start with Ashkenaz, which I'm the most familiar with, and compare it to Nusach Rambam, which is one of the older, uh, more unadulterated nuschaos. And again, by comparing the differences uh, and the reasons for the differences and their implications, you get more insight into the words themselves. Um, avenue number two is Mikra. Uh, the premise of this is that when the Anche Knesset HaGadola made the text of Tefillah, they didn't just write their own um, words, they, they used Psukim as the building blocks. So there are five steps when you apply this method here. Step one, identify the source Psukim. The Mepharshim can help you with that, especially the Budram and the, uh, the Ribar Yakar. Um, look up the source Psukim in their original context. Try to understand them in the original context and not in the context of tefillah. Remember that Torah Shpichsav predated uh, tefillah. So, um, so you want to get a pure understanding of the original context. Then after you've done that, re-examine tefillah in light of that source understanding. Um, sometimes you'll find that seeing the source puzzle in its context will replace what you thought was the shot of the line in tefillah. Sometimes it'll just uh, supplement it. Then lastly, when you daven, apply your newfound understanding in davening. Try to have both the pshat meaning of the text in tefillah and the illuminated meaning from the context in mind when you, when you daven. I like to think of this as if someone cites a poem or a song lyric or a quotation in a speech, you hear it on two levels. You hear it uh, in the original context that you're familiar with from before and you hear it in the way that the speaker is using it. That's really what tefillah should feel like. Three is mafarshim. There are many mafarshim on tefillah and consult them, consult the mafarshim on the source psukim and on the halachos as well. Uh, I'm going to use these five uh, blinetter um, because these are the ones in my brand new Torah Skyim Siddur, which I've been uh, loving. Step four is Masora. I mentioned this in the first video. The text of Tefillah must be understood within its context, which is the halachic system. Um, you're going to have to learn the halachos, and each sugya is going to have a different uh, degree of interrelatedness with, with enhancing your kavana, some more, some less. Five is mind. So I like to do this before I do steps two through four. We've been davening for a while, uh, most of us at least. So you have some meaning in mind. Try to articulate how you have been relating to or understanding the text. Then analyze it on its own, ask questions, raise problems, come up with your own explanation, your own answers, your own insights. Then go to the Mepharshim and the Masora and the, uh, and the um, source Psukim in order to understand it uh, properly and compare what you came up with with uh, your enlightened understanding from those sources. Lastly, meaning. Again, since we've been dominating, we have personal associations, feelings, experiences uh, attached to the text, especially because the text is very poetic. Um, 
these personal feelings might not have anything to do with what the Anshayakananda Sagadola intended, but you can certainly harness them to improve your kavana. And there you have the six steps of, uh, or the six avenues of attaining kavana and tefillah. Um, again, in the series, I will not necessarily use all of them, uh, but these are the six that I intend to use um, uh, as in my toolkit.